So next, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about produce outbreaks that kind of paint the picture as, as to why we have these new federal regulations and um, you know, kind of these tight controls now on, on production of, of fruits and vegetables. So I'm going to present just uh, you know, a few statistics on multi-state outbreaks uh, associated with produce, um, just to give a little bit of framing. An outbreak is defined as two or more people developing the same disease um, from eating the same food product. Um, so an outbreak can be really small in scale, you know, as few as two people. But the, the outbreaks I'm going to talk about here are, are much larger scale and impacted individuals in, in multiple states across the US. So I'm sure everyone's aware of the outbreaks of um, human pathogens and, and leafy greens. Uh, so this has really remained an issue since our first documented large scale outbreak, which was in a bag baby spinach in 2006. In produce, we're primarily worried about three bacterial pathogens, the first being salmonella species, which um, we know poultry is a, is a reservoir for, but there are many other animals that can carry salmonella. Escherichia coli, typically associated with cattle, but can also um, be present in, in other types of livestock and wild animals. And then the last bacteria listed here is Listeria monocytogenes. It's a little bit um, more opaque what the animal reservoir is for this particular, pa particular pathogen, but it's really important in the post-harvest environment. So I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in a little while. So the majority of these leafy green outbreaks were sourced to E. coli um, being the source um, of those outbreaks. Listeria monocytogenes caused one uh, outbreak, but this was a fresh cut operation. So some of that bag pre-cut um, salad that you can buy now in the store and that contamination actually occurred in that processing facility, um, not in the field. Now let's talk about sprouts. So if you're considering sprouts, um, you should just know that they're known to be uh, a very high risk food and there have been a number of uh, outbreaks associated with sprouts. Um, again, we're gonna focus in on these three uh, bacterial pathogens. So the majority of these sprout outbreaks have been caused by salmonella, but there's also some caused by E. coli as well as listeria. So sprouts are a, a very um, high risk food and there are fairly stringent controls on sprout uh, production um, because of its association with a number of outbreaks. Netted melons are also prone to microbial contamination. You can imagine the surface of these melons uh, has a lot of harborage sites for microbial buildup. Um, so in terms of melons, there have been a number of, of outbreaks uh, caused by salmonella, but we've had one very large scale outbreak that was caused by Listeria monocytogenes. And in this particular outbreak, there were 140 people. 47 people that were sickened across the country and 33 people died. Um, so this is, you know, kind of a, you know, worst case outbreak situation and, and we'll talk a little bit more about the details of how this happened uh, a little later on in this presentation. And then I'll end here just talking about uh, cucumber outbreaks. So recently we've had several outbreaks of um, foodborne disease associated with cucumbers, and all of these were caused by salmonella. And you can see that these were very large scale outbreaks. Uh, the last cucumber outbreak, there were nearly uh, a thousand people um, that were sickened by consuming contaminated cucumbers. Um, so really, you know, I've, I've given these specific commodities, but we now know that Microbial contamination can happen in the majority of, of fruit and vegetables that are grown. We've seen outbreaks in numerous different commodities. Um, so it's really important to understand these risks and how to prevent contamination with these pathogens for anyone that's considering um, growing uh, fruits or veggies. 
So I just wanted to do a quick review of the spinach outbreak from 2006. Um, so again, this was an outbreak associated with bagged baby spinach. And as part of the outbreak investigation, FDA collected patient samples and, and leftover spinach samples that people had in their homes and then tested it for different pathogens. And so they were able to find a specific strain of E. coli 0157H7, which is one of these shigatoxin producing E. coli strains we typically have associated with ground beef products, but this was the first time it had shown up in a leafy green. So in this outbreak, there were 191 confirmed cases, over 100 people went to the hospital because they were so sickened by consuming this contaminated spinach. 39 people developed hemolytic uremic syndrome. So this is a complication that can occur after infection with uh, pathogenic E. coli, where the kidneys um, are impacted by a toxin produced by this particular bacteria. And oftentimes these people have to be on dialysis because of kidney failure. And then the people that ultimately die from an E. coli infection, um, it's, it's due to complications associated with this hemolytic uremic syndrome, which we um, abbreviate HUS. So there, there are many potential sources for contamination uh, in the field. And you know, I'm showing a few here on the slide. So when the FDA in collaboration with CDFA did a root cause investigation to determine what the source of uh, that baby spinach contamination uh, was. They isolated that same E. coli strain that they found in the bag baby, baby spinach in patient uh, samples in a CAFO that was located in close proximity to the growing fields. Um, and so it was determined that runoff uh, from this CAFO was the most likely source uh, of the outbreak. They also found that uh, wild boars in that area uh, also were carrying that same isolate that caused the outbreak and that indicated that there was this potential um, for wildlife intrusions to play a role in this outbreak as well. Um, so it's really important to, you know, consider not only what's on your farm, but what's around uh, those produce growing fields and, uh, and assess any of those risks um, because your neighbors can have an impact on, on the safety of your harvest. 